Zenith Cablevision. Thank you for watching. It's time for talk. Each evening at this time, Monday through Friday, Rosemary interviews local personalities and others who bring items of interest to this community. Time for Talk is a community betterment service designed to cooperate with our local community betterment program. And now, it's time for Talk. You are looking at a fur coat in the making, a mink coat in the making, in actuality, you see a row of cages as far almost as you will be able to see with this camera. There are over 200 cages in this building and all the way through another building with 200 cages. All housing beautiful mink. Now, as I stand here, there is not a mink in sight because they're all in a box with babies and we are at Drew Williams Mink Ranch. I called it a ranch and he said, no way you call it a ranch. As dirty as I stay, it's bound to be a farm. But Drew's promised to take us on a tour and to show us babies from uh, I think a day old to all the way up uh, through the mothers right now. But, and the man who says he stays dirty enough to be a farmer, <laughs> Drew Williams. And Drew, you've been at this business for how long? 31 years, it's the 31st crop. All right. Now, are, are prospects getting better or are prospects getting worse? Uh, they're worse because of the foreign countries' currencies are so low that they're they're flooding the market with mink pelts, and they're doing fine, and we're not. Just like uh, most of our other farm products. All right. So you're you're hurting with the far with the with the imports. Right. Right. And we're going to hurt a lot worse because even China's getting in the act, and and their wages are 25 cents an hour. Okay, now, you were going to tell us about uh, all these babies you have. How many do you think you have at this point? Oh, How many will you raise? 5,000. You'll raise 5,000 mink this year? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and, and this? What, Th what this this is a, you can call this a mink cradle if you want to. I mm -hmm. guess we're the only place in the world that uses this. This is something we've been working on for about six years, and it's a okay, canvas. Did you come up with this idea? Yeah. Instead of, ha ha most people use hay or some other bedding for them, but just before they whip, they tear that all to pieces and lose a lot of their babies. And this they can't. This is a little... They lose the babies? Yes, because they're all tangled up in the bedding. Okay, and are they really that tiny? Oh, they're very tiny. We're going to show you. You're going to see how small. Okay, all right. So you're going to lose them. Uh, you can call this a little cradle if you want to. It's just nothing but canvas nails to a frame. And if you'll notice, it's, it, it dips down. In other words, and, and it's, it's about like being in a hammock. And no matter how she lays in here, it's a perfect bed for the babies. And, and uh, now I have heard some scratching in one of the yeah, cases. Yeah, they'll do that. that they scratch sure on the floor. Is, is, is on this campus right. that sure, I'm they'll doing. do that. They, they scratch on the floor. Okay. And then, of course, this is the box they're in, and this fits in the bottom of the box. See, it just sits in the bottom. In other words, that's where she has her young. And uh, you ready to look at some older babies now? Some, we're going to look at the older babies first. I'll, I'll drag out a little old one. And we're going to spoon her out. She's not going to want to come out of there. Okay, now what about what about a, a mink uh, mother? Uh, what kind of mother is she? Oh, the best in the world. They're the absolute best. And they, can't, they can't count, so it doesn't matter how many babies you put with her. If she has two and her neighbor has ten, well, you can just split them up. Okay, now, is that why I don't see any mink right. out in sure, these cages? Sure, they're right with her, but you won't see them very often, very seldom. Okay, now, how, do, how long does it take a mother to have the babies? So there's no gestation time. They can go 40 days or 80. Really? And that's determined by light, not 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 the breeding cycle, but the actual how much light they've been exposed to. Okay, so that way, and I, I hear the babies. I don't know if mm -hmm. they can pick that up on camera. Now, that's to ensure the fact that they'll get here when the weather's right, warmer. Right. Nature says have the babies about the first day of May, and they'll they'll do that in a, in a normal state. I mean, almost exactly. Okay, on the first day of May, you really had a flood of babies. About the time the cotton farmers are worried about flooding their cotton, I'm worried about whether or not I'm going to have a crop of egg every year. It's the same cycle. Okay, all right. Now, the mink, the looks of the mink this time of year are not all that great. Oh, no, they've, they're, shed, they're shedding. They're shedded their winter fur. Well, do you, see, you see all this? It looks like cotton balls under the pen there. It just yeah, looks like yeah, little pieces of cotton. That's their winter fur that's fell off. In other words, they shed. Okay, uh, this for time hot year. winter. For right, hot winter. Sure. So when do they begin to put on the winter coat? In October. They'll, they'll by the 1st of November, while they're pretty well furred again. All right. Well, by the way, they start that in August when it's 100 degrees. An uh, animal can't wait till cold weather to put on their fur. they got to have it ahead of that. So they'll put it on in southeast they Missouri? Start and it on. They start it on the end of their tail, and it progressively goes right up their body to their head. From the end of the tail? Right. And you'll see it on the tip of their tail first. It looks like a little paintbrush on there. 
And, uh, but they can't wait. They do that by light, too. In other words, when the days start getting shorter and less brilliant, well, then they put their winter fur on because they know cold weather's coming. All right. Now, we're going to watch you okay. spoon this out. Okay. okay. Uh, this, this is my oldest litter that was born on the 11th of April. And this is the 4th of May, so uh, they're, what, 23 days old. And we just take it off, and here she is with her babies, and we get this spoon. What, what did she get? And she, she, got picked one, up one. she picked up one she in her mouth and one. ran with it. She's locked out. Okay, now you have to do that. She is really well, she wants, she wants back in. Right. Okay, she is a good mother. Look at, li listen to her and, crack. And now I don't know whether these are going to show up on this box top or not, but here's her babies now. And isn't that precious? Look at that. Isn't that precious? Yeah. I need to say a few words right in there. Oh, how pitiful that is! Look at that. Now, Drew, the, tell me again about uh, tell me again about the uh, uh, age of this and the and and the, the they, color of the breeding. They are 21 days old. 23 days old. Pardon me. 23 days old, and they'll be a dark brown color when they when they mature. And how how long does it take their eyes to open? 35 days. Wonder why so long? Well, I I think I, I, in the wild that. By the time they can open their eyes, they can take care of themselves. Uh, that that keeps them in the bed while they're helpless. Do you have any babies in this litter? Uh, she has seven. Oh, okay, uh, she's a good mama. Oh, certainly. She's do you, excellent. Do you only keep them one year to bring them? No, no, they'll, they'll go three or four. Okay, all right. Okay, now, what's... what's now, that's the dark brown. Okay. And, and here's a here's a kid out of another litter that's beige, you see. We lay him up. Can, we, can you see yeah. him against uh -huh. the, yeah. the colors there? Two different colors. Okay, now, now, uh, uh, this one's yelling too. Turn around, let's see, listen, I think that's, okay. Uh, now, how old is this one? Oh, he's, he's about five days younger than these. He's about 18 days old. He's not as Oh, big. so they really grow by leaps and bounds, oh, don't they? Oh, yeah, you, you wait till you, you, we're going to see some day olds here, just in a second. Okay, so this is, okay, this is how many weeks old? Oh, uh, he's two weeks old, two and weeks they're old? almost three. They're not quite three. Not quite three weeks, so you mm -hmm. see the difference there. Okay, all right, now we're going to get to look at some real young ones. Real babies. Okay. Uh, when you have a litter of newborns out, you got to keep them warm because they don't have a mechanism to stay warm and they're naked and blind and very, very weak. And I saw you. Yeah. <laughs> all, all along bringing those things. Sure, I, I'll do that all the way with these and keep them warm. Uh, now, okay. now, they're normally in their mother's lap, you might say. She just wraps around them and makes a cradle for them. Okay. Now, I bet she protested when you did Oh, not very bad, but she didn't know what I was going to do. Oh, well, no. let's lay these down, and, and this is a flashlight battery, just to give you an idea. Edward D battery. And there's five of these baby mink, and we're just going to lay them out here so you can see what they look uh, like. Oh, <laughs> they look good. Isn't that amazing? Looky there, and they were born last, last night. night. These were born last night. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, isn't that precious? Just a bunch of little little babies. They look like mice. Little well, mice, <laughs> little mice. And look at here as compared to that D battery. They're hardly, uh, what a... You would think you were hearing uh, mice or birds or, or whatnot. And they get cold. Oh, All right. Okay. They take them, they scoop them back up and take them to the, to the mama. See, you, can, you can hold 20 of them in your hands. <laughs> okay. A handful, a handful of mink. Look at there. They're, they're squirming. But they're going to be beautiful, aren't they? Oh, sure. They better be. <laughs> Okay. Sometimes they'll come out just from noise. In other words, you wreck this spoon on here and she'll come out. See? Okay. And well, that's what she did. And okay. I locked her. I and locked you her out. Locked her out with the, now, with the now door. she'll walk back to those babies. Now watch her. She's fighting that door now. She wants back. Okay. You've got her blocked out where she can't. Uh, she can't oh, oh, okay. All okay. right. Now, now, her babies were, they're how old now? They're 18 days old. Okay. Okay. All right. And we'll just set the lid over here. And and I want to, what I want to do here is take, there's six, six of these babies, and they're beige, they're beige colored. See, there, there's the whole six. He just reaches in and grabs things. Yeah, I can tell you've handled it. Oh, sure. <laughs> Go with them. Okay. Uh, one nice thing about a lake probably he doesn't have to count past ten usually, and it, you can learn that real quick. <laughs> okay. But okay, now, I, we're going to take three of these. Yeah. That's half the litter. Yeah. And we're going to... And he is going crazy. Oh, yeah. Guess. She wants back in. But we're going to pull a little trick on her. We're going to take them out of the bed and uh, lay them outside and see what she does. Oh, you, you're going to let her in and then block her in. We're going to put her back in. Now we've locked her in. Now we're going to set them out. 
Let's just throw them out on this block. By the way, this block, you asked me about that earlier, yeah. is what they're going to be fed on when they get just a little bit older. When I get about another week older, well, they'll start eating food. Okay, now you, you have only screen in the bottom yeah. of the cage. So right. That. Now, now, she's going to come out and, and she's going to look them over and say they're in the wrong place. Oh, and she doesn't want them out in the open. No. Right? And watch her, watch her grow. Now, now, she can't count. They're not very good. They're not very smart. So she's going to come get this last one if she does what we think she will. Yeah. Okay. You may be out of luck. Oh, no. All right. Now, watch her come out one more time and look around. Okay, so she doesn't know how many she's no, got, but she, she wants to make sure she's got <laughs> everything. Yeah, no, she may not do it. I mean, well, you know, we're here uh, giving her a little bit of trouble. But ordinarily, but, she'd come but out. But normally, she'd stick her head back out there and just be absolutely sure she got them all. Okay, now. But she's not going to do it. She okay, may lie. At, at, at what age do you begin <clears> to feed them? And what do men eat? When they're 25 days old, and they eat mostly meat. Although they do eat cereal, and it's got to be cooked. In other words, it's a cooked cereal. Okay, all right, and they eat meat mostly. Right. Uh, what kind of meat? Well, chicken is the uh, okay. most used product. Okay, uh, all right. Condemned chickens or chicken necks are... There's lots of waste products in meat production. Uh, people don't eat uh, certain parts of the chicken anymore. Okay. We used to eat it all, but they don't anymore. Okay, and you buy have in what quantities? Well, uh, 20 times, you know, trailer truck loads. Trailer truck loads. Yes, ma'am. And you keep them high. How do you keep the chicken? Frozen. Uh, frozen. We got freezers. Okay. And and do you put can, do you put it out frozen for them or, or? Well, no. But it's cold. In other words, we don't let it thaw completely up. We grind it when it's just about half frozen. Okay. Uh, well, you grind the meat. You're going to grind yeah, this. Each one of those little baby mink takes a hundred pounds of feed to raise it. Is that a hundred? So we'll use a half million pounds of. May feed this year. Okay, now now these animals, even though you work with them for a year, do they stay vicious? Oh, very. They, they don't have. They're not very smart. They're not. They're not smart at all. In fact, uh, they've got no room in their head for brains. If you look at their head real close, if you could see a, a mink's head and look at it real close, if uh, you'd see that the the little hump that a dog has, she's not going to be still enough, maybe. But the little hump that a dog has in their head for brains, they don't have. You know, they're just. Uh, their brain is just a swelling so on the end of the... So when you talk about teaspoonful of brains, you Oh, they don't have it. They don't even have that. Uh, okay. Uh, Are they more vicious this time you think? Oh, well, certainly you got When they're protecting those babies. Now, a little later, we're going to have to scrape those blocks every day. In other words, we're going to have to open this door and actually scrape that block. Get the old food off and be sure it's clean, you know, for the new food. Okay. And they just come out and fight like terrible. They'll just, they'll, they sometimes come right out of the pen. And you have to work with heavy gloves. Oh, sure. So, so when, whenever you handle them. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Don, I remember that you developed a, a, a strain. That, that was a long-haired mink, though. That wasn't a color. That was a long-haired mink. Long yeah, most mink are real short-haired as far as animals are concerned. Yeah. And that was a long-haired mink. And that didn't really go over because of the manufacturing process didn't, didn't fit American styles at all. Okay. It had to be done by hand, and in America you don't do things by hand. That, it had to, if you can't recognize it, it couldn't be done. Uh, but uh, right now, uh, there's not really much difference in colors. There's, there, we've got about 30 colors, and uh, it's fair quality and size that really matters. Okay, and, and you have called, this, this is called a beige. She's called beige. beige. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. We just use a big pencil. It's like beginners in school would use because we want to make a big mark on their record so it'll show, see? And uh, if that goes in the pen, why well, she gets it? See that? She's got that pencil, and she she. Uh, and those teeth are really sharp. Oh yeah, they'll go right through it. Well, well she just, what, she what, just took it away from me. Okay, now what are you gonna do? You need oh, to well, get it back. Well, we'll just lock that door. See? Okay, all right. We'll lock it and get it back. We'll just lock that door and take it back. Oh, okay. She just jerked it right okay. out of there. Okay. See the tooth marks on this pencil? She sunk her teeth right up in the wood there. Now. Uh, she would fight this every time you put it in. She oh, sure. wouldn't learn that it's a pencil. Oh, well, she might learn. She she, she might learn if you put it in there several times, but uh, what she was hoping that was was your finger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, a bite, a mink bite is really a... Uh, oh, they can bite, but we don't get bit. I mean, uh, we laugh at one another when somebody gets bit out here because we protect her. We've got gloves, and we yeah, know how to work. Work in, okay. Sure. But you have been visiting with Drew Williams mink. With Drew Williams, and we've been standing in the middle of a mink farm. We have seen babies from... One day to three weeks, and uh, Drew, it's been a most interesting visit. We certainly thank you for letting us come by way of Time for Talk cameras and take a tour. Thank you.